Okay, back on the Detroit project. It's been a while since I posted a video on it because I've just been picking away at it here and there over the summer. Haven't had a solid time to work on it. And, you know, with a project like this, as old as this motor is, and when you take your time with it, things kind of fall in place a little bit better. So that's what I've been doing. And uh, since the last video, um, I've had the injectors apart. They were all stuck, and so I took them all apart, cleaned them, had them bench tested, and the guy said that they would uh, run the engine. Some of them might be a little hazy because they kind of drip, and if they sat with fuel in them, you know, they might drip, kind of leak by. But he said uh, for test firing an engine like we're gonna do here, they would be just fine. Um, and those are N45 injectors. And then back here, I got the number two flywheel housing on. This engine came with a number one flywheel housing, pretty large. And it came with this number two flywheel. So I had number one housing and a number two flywheel when I bought it. And of course the number two setup is much more uh, user friendly when you're looking for a transmission that's not a uh, giant 13 speed or something. Um, with dual counter shafts. I just want a six speeds, single counter shaft is all I want. Um, so anyways, I got that on there. And the number one housing came with this um, cam gear cover to run the fuel pump. And obviously this housing, this number two housing had the fuel pump over there, but this engine was not set up for that. You know, I didn't have this idler gear over here to drive a fuel pump, so I needed to get the fuel pump to work off of the cam gear drive. Could not find an accessory drive plate to run the fuel pump in this position with five bolts, as you see. So, kind of modified the number one plate to work on the number two housing by just notching out. I still have some finishing touches to do to it to make sure that it stays in place while the engine is running, but it will work. You know, it is centered and it will work uh, in this setup. Kind of ground down with a sander, the flywheel surface. And there's no hot spots, no cracks. It's uh, in pretty good shape. We got it bolted down and torqued. And I cleaned up. I am using the original bolts, but I'm not. I'm just using them to test fire this engine. Long term, I'll have to get new ones to make sure it's safe. So that's all on. Uh, it's all sealed. I do need to lift the engine up so I can seal the oil pan and then put five gallons of oil in it, which is Rotella Straight Weight 40. Uh, something else I did, you know, I took the exhaust manifolds off so when it's running I can see um, which cylinders are firing and how they're, how they're firing. I also took off these inspection covers, looked into the cylinders and checked out the pistons and the rings. They all had normal wear on them. I got a new oil filter. Um, what else did I do? Oh, uh, the original fuel lines up here in the front of the motor would have leaked if I sent fuel through them. They're all loose. The O-rings were no good. And some of the fittings were a little damaged. So I could not thread anything onto them. And to buy new ones, they were pretty expensive. And it was just easier to make new ones out of copper pipe and brass fittings, which I did here. I made sure before I installed these that <clears throat> I wasn't running any smaller diameter fittings or pipe. Therefore, I wouldn't have a, a flow restriction. These uh, brass fittings are actually larger diameter on the inside, so fuel flow would be good, no restrictions. Before I started this video, I, uh, Pushed fuel through the system, make sure there was no uh, clogs or anything. And I did that by bridging all the injector ports 
the supply and return ports with uh, some 516s PVC or vinyl. I think this is actually vinyl tubing. Um, when I pushed fuel through, it did leak a little bit at the bottom, but I wiped it all up before the fuel could get anywhere. There's no oil in this any, anyway, so it's not like I'd be diluting it. Um, but I wiped it up beforehand anyways. So I bridged all those. Put a, That's the return line right there, and I put that in a bottle. And this is actually the second fill up of this bottle. And it's definitely dirty. It's coming out pretty dirty. The first bottle had chunks and everything else in that. You don't want to see that go through your fuel system because the injectors have that little filter in each one of them. And you know, all that junk that came through would have clogged up those filters. Filter screen or whatever Detroit calls it. So over here, this is the supply line that goes into the back of the head on the driver's side. You got some more vinyl tubing that I've run down to the pump. On the back of the pump, you know, the shaft that comes out the back of the pump has a square head on it. And if you get a 10 millimeter 12 point socket, you can run that pump with a drill. So I have this drill in high speed, which is 1700 RPMs, somewhat what the motor would be running at, you know, half throttle or so. So I put that on there and ran it, pulled fuel from this tank, the fuel came out just fine from the tank, nice and clear, and it went up into the engine, but seemed like it had a lot of air bubbles in it the whole time. And even uh, all those little bridges still, when the fuel was going through there, there was a ton of air. Uh, so that's telling me that the pump had a leak. And as you can see, resting, the pump is leaking fuel. And it's the shaft seal, the pump's drive shaft. There's a seal around that, and I believe that's the culprit. So I need to replace that seal so I'm not pushing so much air through the system. But even with the leak, it still pushed plenty of fuel through. And, um, you know, filled that bottle up twice. Looks like I still have some cleaning to do, and uh, I'll do that by pushing more fuel through before I hook up the injectors. So that's where I'm at now. Uh, I also got to hook up this uh, engine oil pressure test kit. There's a port over here, there, that bottom right um, Allen set screw there. Uh, that's where you can pull oil pressure off. But that one's being stubborn and I can't get it out. Um, so I'm going to try the second one that's available on this block on the passenger side. And that's over here, this T-fitting. I'm going to remove this T-fitting and plug in the test gauge into that port. And this T-fitting was supplying oil to the air compressor that came on this um, originally I have that air compressor and that's what it was hooked up to I do need to do something with this here I think I just need to block that off I think that was the oil return from the compressor and then this is I assume what they filled the oil up with I don't know what else that would be for so yeah, and mount the starter. I just got the starter. I need to get three bolts for it and clock the head on the starter. These heads are clockable, depending on what side of the motor you're gonna be running it on. Uh, so yeah, that's all I've done so far. And maybe within a week or two, I'll have it fired up. Stay tuned.